the Joe Rogan experience. Flesh eaters. Yeah, they'll they'll fuck up a dog. They're weird. I, you know, it's like one of the things that I think it points to a certain amount of uh, sociopathy that I have. But when I hear about someone losing a cat or dog to wild creatures, I don't like my initial instinct isn't to be sad. Mm. I see what you're saying. You're like, well, that's part of the because you kind of, of view you sort of I have this view that. Yeah, I have this view of that 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 sort of like settlement and development v wildlife mm-hmm. is is a global problem, right? And one always wins. Like the destruction of wildlife habitat always wins. And then when you see it, it when you see it play out like that, in some ways you kind of like hope. Like Ryan Callahan, who you know, yep. Recently, uh, you know that kid got a, a, a young kid. It's like a nine or ten year old girl got thrown up in the air by a bison yeah did you see that yeah in yellowstone yeah and by no means does cal hope to see someone uh, you know especially particularly a child get hurt but he's like you know they still got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't you can't just close in on a bison they apparently yeah. got within 15 yards of that thing which yeah. is just ridiculous yeah i think i keep thinking about making a shirt that says um yellowstone national park uh habituating wildlife since 1877 they do it is weird uh i've only been once well i I went once when i was a kid but i went once recently with my family and it was uh very weird that you could take selfies with elk yeah these big herds of elk are so confident that people won't shoot them when they're in like the public tourism area that they just go and hang out near the vending machine yeah so i'm getting a diet coke and there's an elk like 30 <laughs> yards away from me. It's so strange. That's that's a little bit in line with what that's a little bit in line with what I'm talking about when I talk about like that when I hear someone's dog got killed by a coyote. Yeah. Oh, you know, and again, man, I know like like my brother has this little dog that he just loves and they're inseparable. Um if that dog got carried off by a great horned owl in a healthy great horned owl could carry this dog off. It's like a little shitting dog. I would feel real bad for him. Uh, so with that said, I, I do have this thing where you kind of root and I do feel sad when I see like in a place like Yellowstone, this is where it gets a little bit weird. When I see an wild animals, especially animals that people hunt for, when I see that they've lost their fear of humans, some people would look and be like, oh, this is like what naturally they should be like. Okay. So this is animals where they've had to give up their human, where they've lost their human fear because we've given them this wild place. I see. Old timey. Old timey. Steve Vanilla. It's <laughs> a good dude. Joe Farinato call him. He's a good guy. Uh, People see in, in like a Yellowstone Park atmosphere, you see where wildlife becomes habituated to humans and they feel like they're seeing something more natural, right? Because outside of human hunting, they all of a sudden don't have that feeling anymore. I look at that and I see that it's like, um, to me, it feels like something's been subverted and something's wrong with that situation. Yeah. Because it sort of depends on how fresh your perspective is because, I mean, people have been hunting, uh, you know, people have been hunting in that area. I mean at least 10,000 years. So then we take like a hundred year break and the animals become very accustomed to people. It's, it's shocking how quickly they can get it back. And, and oftentimes those same elk that live like the same elk that will spend their summer in that park will migrate out of there and go into national forest and on ranch land. And where, then they'll be wary where they people? can be hunted and they know they wow. cross that line. So the same elk that some dude could basically walk up and touch there will just something in his head switches and he enters and they enter into a new mind space when they leave and they're still exposed to human predation. And if they wind you, they'll bolt. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's, it's shocking how <laughs> it's shocking the degree to which they, the degree to which they can keep this together in their heads. And it's also pretty surprising how, how quickly they adapt. Like I would imagine if you were to open up, this would be a pretty controversial idea, but I'll throw it out there. Let's say you were to open up hunting in Yellowstone National Park. I think that it would probably be less than a year. I think like a season, a fall hunting season, would have them right back into the same mindset that all the other 
animals that, that live with human predation, their sort of attitude toward people, I think mm. they would very quickly get it back. It makes sense. But yeah, people going up and petting stuff. Um, again, like referring to Cal, his idea is that like people have gotten to where they confuse national parks with amusement parks. And they feel that the animals are like on rails, <laughs> you know, they're <laughs> they on tracks. Yeah, the they just, and it's like they're programmed to do a certain thing. But well, it's still wild. It's one thing that I've discovered over the last seven years, thanks to you and thanks to you getting me hunting, is that most people have no idea what it's like to be around actual wildlife, to sneak up to them. Most people have no idea about their sense of smell. Like to see yeah. an animal wind you and then just fucking bounce to, to see that and to know that like you're dealing with some superhuman ability, some uh, like impossible to imagine with the confines of your own biology, what these animals can do. And when you're, when you're out amongst them and there's no cell phone service and there's, it's just footprints and trekking your way through mountains. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not. Yellowstone. What Yellowstone is and what anything like that, and zoos is the worst example, right? But when we think of animals, like people always tell me, like, like, because, you know, I have a famous dog. I run with him all the time and he's on my Instagram. <laughs> it's like everybody loves him. He's the sweetest dog <laughs> in the world. And they, they're like, I love that dog. If you love dogs, how could you, how could you hunt animals? And I'm like, well, no. that's, that's not, he's not an animal. He's a dog. He's a pet. He's, uh, he's a science project. An, an animal is a wolf. An animal is a deer. That's an animal. What a dog is, they don't survive outside of us. If you don't take care of them, they won't know what to do. They'll hope that the dog catcher comes and gets them and somebody rescues them. They're not wild animals. It's not. It, has, it almost has less to do with how they're raised and more to do with their ancestors. Like Their, their biology has changed. They've literally been bred to something different. They're a fucking science project. Yeah. And you see my dog, he's got floppy ears. He's a sweetheart. Everybody who meets him, he drops to his back and he wants you to rub his belly. He's just the sweetest dog in the world. That is not a dog. I mean, it's not an animal. There's not an animal like that that would ever exist out in the wild. Because if he sees another dog, he's like, hello, are you my friend? He's not like checking to see if that thing's going to steal his food or, or rob him of his mates or, or, or kill his babies. Yeah, he's a, it's, it's the result of a 20,000 or whatever your yeah. experimentation with the domestication of an animal yeah so most people when they say they love animals they don't even fucking know any they don't even know what they are they see the caged animals at the zoo they see the animals on a rope that they they take to the dog park they think they know what an animal is they don't even have any experience with it we've been so domesticated and so isolated in cities most people especially most people that have opinions on this shit you know, people that live in rural areas, I mean, you know that. You live in Bozeman, and Bozeman is, you know, surrounded by these areas that are just fucking completely wild. I mean, if you're in Bozeman, you can drive an hour from your house, and then you're around bears and deer yeah, yeah, yeah. and eagles. I mean, it's a completely wild place. But people that are in those areas, people around Boise, Idaho, for example, they have a totally different idea. People in Wyoming. I have a totally different idea of what wildlife is versus somebody who lives in Santa Monica. Like there's a video that just somebody sent me today <clears throat> of um, a guy in Thousand Oaks uh, is uh, on his street and he's filming a fucking enormous mountain lion. I mean, it is huge. It's a big boy. It's like 150 pounds. And uh, they're in the car and they're looking at it through the window and him and his son, it seems like, are, are filming this thing going, holy shit, look at this thing. Yeah, yeah. It's right there on the street, a big ass cat. And he was saying that like somebody was film somebody was feeding it apparently, and they're they're trying to figure out what you want me to send it to you. Um, I'll send it to you, yes, but this, uh, you know, that's that's super rare. I mean, that's a real wild animal. It's super super rare that that anybody would have any kind of experience with one of these things. And most people that are talking about animals, they just really don't know what that even means. They're just saying it. Yeah, I think that there, there's developed a <clears throat> like a a pretty big cultural division between people who um a pretty big cultural division between people who kind of like live around and work around and deal with animals and people who view them or think of them as very other uh, a friend of mine who's a biologist this, this, oh there you go yeah no no i'm sending you another one i sent it to you it's 
It's uh, from Thousand Oaks. I just sent it to you. <clears throat> a friend of mine, one, though, that's a that's a recent one too. A uh, buddy of mine who's a biologist with the Forest Service, a guy named Carl Malcolm. He might have heard on our our show. Uh, he just sent me a, a paper that was about kids' attitudes to wildlife, and it was comparing rural people's attitude and knowledge of wildlife kids with urban and, and suburban attitudes about wildlife. And you, you can see the input of media when you look at this thing because people who live in an urban or suburban environment, when they tell you the top of mind wildlife that they know about, it's non-native stuff. Like lions? Yeah, they're likely to know like what's, what's an animal, right? And an animal would be like, oh, it'd be like a giraffe, right? Mm. And, and and people who have a more um, rural or remote viewpoint would be are, are much more likely to like, when they think of wildlife to think of things that they interact with, mm. you know, and not like the things that are on your mobile above your crib <laughs> when you're a little baby. Right. And it sort of points at, and, and also. There, there's a slight tendency, I got to look at this more carefully, but there's a slight tendency to have uh, negative feelings or think things are dangerous or bad the more urban you are in terms of native wildlife, to more recognize it as like a negative or bad thing. And what they're pointing to is, um, again, I want to look at this much more carefully and pardon me to the authors, of, authors if I'm messing this up, I was just looking at it this morning. Um, what they're pointing to is the 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 stirrings of there being a, a greater acceptance of decreased biodiversity hmm. meaning that you're kind of like okay with the bad things having gone and we're focused on like what are animals well animals would be like a giraffe and hippopotamus and the things that that disney tells me about and not like possums and raccoons which are kind of gross hmm. you know 